Hey Greg, uh, I'm about to turn 21. What should be my first cocktail? What should I get for my first drink? And today I wanna answer that question and I've got five drinks that I think should be in your arsenal, whether it's your first drink or your thousand. <laughs> Okay, so what makes for a great first cocktail? Well, it should be something that is relatively approachable for somebody with a, an experienced palate. The ability to drink really spirit-forward cocktails and enjoy them does come with age. Your taste buds do change as you get older, as your brain develops. That is like actually a part of the human developmental process. But also your ability to enjoy drinks that are really spirit-forward, that will change as you have cocktails from time to time over the course of your life. So really great first cocktails should be approachable. But if I'm gonna answer this question, they shouldn't only be approachable cocktails because you kind of already know what those are, right? Like there's a rum and coke, there's a white Russian. These are things that have a small amount of alcohol in a very sweet package. They're what we call dangerous drinks. Dangerous because all of that sugar will probably make you feel more like shit than the alcohol in them will. What I'm interested in talking about today are classic cocktails. And if you have an interest in mixology and good, quality cocktails and drinks, I want to introduce you to that in a way that would inspire you to experiment and explore other classic cocktails and maybe develop your own drinks and to find out that, boy, there's really something here. You know, there's a reason that people kind of get into like the aficionado-ness of this whole mixological thing. Without further ado, I want to make a drink that I've often used as my stock answer for what I think a great first cocktail could be because you're going to drink this and say, holy shit, I didn't know a cocktail could be like that and it's gonna well, change the course of your life. That's what I'm doing here at How to Drink. I'm changing lives, everybody. So we're gonna make a whiskey sour and we're gonna start with an ounce of lemon juice. One ounce of lemon juice. A lot of sours follow a similar format, generally speaking about equal parts sugar to sour. So I'm gonna do an ounce of simple syrup. We need two ounces of bourbon and we need an egg white. Now, why would I throw an egg white cocktail at somebody for their first drink? It's a good question. I think that's what makes this drink so exciting to somebody who's having their first cocktail. It's gonna have a texture and an experience that you won't find in a lot of other drinks. I'm gonna dry shake that when you work with an egg white, you probably should dry shake. We wanna unfold all of those proteins in the egg white so they get into a nice frothy hit. Boom, and you can see it's already kind of frothing up in there. You could serve a whiskey sour in a lot of different glasses. I happen to really like them in a coupe. What I want to do is give that a minute to let a head develop. It's all working its way to the top right now. Then I'm going to take my bitters bottle. I like to do this kind of a garnish on these. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do just a zigzag. Uh, here we are, a whiskey sour that's overflowing. I really think that this is a drink that is alive with like an electricity. The tension between the sweet and the sour here is always a joy and often like surprising no matter how many of these I've had. I'm like, oh, that's right. That's what those taste like. Jesus, that's good. It just really wakes up the senses. It is not too bitter or sour or bracing. It is not too sweet. You have really good balance and that makes it so approachable. It's so approachable. I don't want to say it's candy like because it's definitely not that sweet, but it's as approachable as like a piece of candy. And then the final note is a little bit of the bourbon. You get a little bit of the corn, you get a little bit of the oak, a little bit of that other kind of elusive sweetness. I think that the cocktail helps bring out the bourbon. It makes the bourbon easier to find and appreciate, especially if you have an unexperienced palate. If you do this right, you are, are building skills. You will impress yourself. You will make this and you'll say, oh my God, that's so cool. I do have a couple more though, so let's keep it going. It's wine time here at How to Drink and you know what that means. This episode is sponsored by Bright Cellars because Bright Cellars have been sponsoring this show for a really long time. So I think you do know what that means. They will send the wine straight to your front door. You don't have to go to the store. You don't even have to pick it out. You fill out a little quiz on the website. They use that information to pair you up with great wines from around the world and they send them right to your house. They're so good at picking wines for you that they have a full glass guarantee. If you don't absolutely love the wine, they will replace it, no questions asked. I'm having this apostate Zinfandel. I think it's a drier wine that I enjoy quite a bit. I think it's drier. I suppose that's open to opinion, but I like this as a dry red wine. 
dry. Delicious. I'm not like a wine expert, which is really good for me because Bright Sellers will pick these wines for me and they send me these really cool cards to teach me about the wine that they sent me. And what's exciting and happening now that's new that we've never done with Bright Sellers before is that they asked me to pick some wines, my favorite wines from over the years that we've been working together. You go to brightsellers.com, you can use the link in the pin comp below, you can use it up here in the corner. You're gonna check out some wines. You could pick out my box instead of letting them pick for you. And if you order it in the next two weeks, you're gonna get 20% off. I think that's pretty awesome. So I'm very excited about it. Check out my wine picks. It's not my wine, but the picks I want. The picks I wind. Use the link in the pin cop below or up here in the corner in the next two weeks. You get 20% off. Thank you, Bright Sellers, for sponsoring this episode. Thank you for watching this. Thank you for trying out Bright Sellers. And now I send you back to how to drink to whatever's going on over there on the show. Salute. Tom Collins is a classic cocktail, way pre-prohibition, just like the whiskey sour. These go back to the 1860s, 1880s, 1890s. I usually build these in the glass. There's no reason to overcomplicate things. I need an ounce of lemon juice, and I might need another lemon. I don't think there's a whole ounce left in what I got over here. Oh my God, right in my freaking eye. All right, there you go, one ounce of lemon juice. On these, actually, I like to go to a half an ounce personally, and I'm gonna make mine that way, or three quarters. You know, anytime a drink calls for simple syrup, for the most part, you can do that to taste. You can kind of make a decision about how sweet you want that drink. This is a very, very top shelf gin. Not necessary at all for this drink. Feel free to use whatever gin you have. Tanqueray is what I usually use. I miss out a drink like Tanqueray, which is why I'm fresh out of Tanqueray at the moment. Stir this over ice, and yes, your ice doesn't need to be my ice. It's a bit much. It's a little extra, a little bit of extra. I don't know if they say any more of that. Do they still say, oh, you're so extra, or that they're so extra, or that's extra? I don't think they do. I think I'm, I'm out a bit. You can make your own soda with something like a Drinkmate. I love my Drinkmate. I didn't bring it to set today because I'm Trying to work a little quick. There you go, top it up with soda and put a straw in it. If you feel like garnishing it with a lemon twist or a wedge or anything, it'll be so much the better, but it's totally unnecessary. But it is a classic cocktail. It is an approachable cocktail. It is a fresh, bright, and delicious cocktail, and I've talked myself into it. I gotta have some. Mm. I love it. If you happen to be gin curious, this is a great introduction to gin. Again, just like in the whiskey sour, you get this wonderful interplay of sweet and sour that will lift up that base spirit, the gin, because it's in here. You get it. You can taste the juniper and the other herbal components of gin. Gin actually has like something like 60 or 70 different herbal components. It's a very complicated spirit. Typically, it's just not made by an aging process. It's made through a vapor infusion process, I think, usually. Anyway. It takes that and it, it makes it approachable. When you are new to cocktails, if you just went for a gin martini, it's a little bit like getting caught smoking and, and your dad saying, now you gotta smoke a whole cart. Generally speaking, you're probably not gonna have a good time with that gin martini. Right now, there's some dudes in my comments, young guys who are flexing their muscles going, oh, not me, I, 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 I love that. I, I go for right the, oh no, I don't even need a glass. You can drink it right from the bottle. Uh, good for you. I'm not that guy. I love a Collins. They're so refreshing. Right, effervescent. You can spend some time with it. You know, that's the one thing about drinks that are on ice. Yes, they will get wet, the flavor profile will change, but an up drink will die. It will warm up and it will kind of end up flat and you kind of need to drink them with a little bit of urgency. Whereas this is something you can kind of walk around with. And if it's too strong for you, you can sip it down and you can add a little bit more club soda to it. Uh, it's a perfect cocktail. It's a really good place to start if you're really interested in mixology and you don't know what should be your first drink. And I think it will open your eyes to a wider world of interesting drinks. I don't know who I was going for there. I started out trying to go for Obi-Wan, but I, I don't got an Obi-Wan voice in me. I think I slept into Deckard Kane. I think Deckard Kane is that his name in, in Diablo. Listen and stay a while. Uh, all right, let's move on to a daiquiri. I think a daiquiri is much like a whiskey sour. These are all drinks for the most part that are gonna fall into that sour category. You could, if you wanted to, call a daiquiri a rum sour. I don't think you'd be entirely wrong. I feel like somebody's gonna get their back up about it and that's their problem, but a daiquiri is a delicious drink. Traditionally, the daiquiri is a shook drink, a shaken drink that gets served up. If you wanna be like, ah, my first cocktail, I'd like to try some rum. Look at a daiquiri, unless you're at a tiki bar. I would say that most of the drinks at a tiki bar are pretty approachable. I caution myself though, because good tiki bars are destinations. Like people in the tiki world know like the 50 or so <laughs> that are around America and they kind of make pilgrimages to them. So I wouldn't over concern yourself with tiki drinks unless you're gonna make them yourself. The thing about tiki drinks is that they're strong. They're strong. They might be very approachable, but they tend to be very high proof and big and large format, even for a single serving. They are kind of built to knock you on your ass. And I think that if you're looking for your first cocktail, Maybe a zombie is a poor choice, even if you could if you could enjoy drinking it. I don't know that it's where you should start. A daiquiri, on the other hand, is a good place to begin, I think. And we're gonna start it with an ounce of lime juice. Always use fresh 
juice. That's like another thing too. If you're making these drinks for yourself and you always use fresh juices, you really are gonna have a much better time. Somewhere between half an ounce and three quarters of an ounce is simple. I'm gonna do three quarters. You can make yours however you like. All right, and then I want two ounces of rum. Uh, I gotta tell you, a Bacardi Silver is fine here. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I'm all out. As you may notice, I'm often out of things. I think something like a Demerara would be very approachable of what I had available, but really like Bacardi Silver is fine for this drink. I have two ounces, I hope, of El Dorado five years left. Oh no, we're a little shy. All right, time for me to go to the wall of booze and get myself another bottle so I can finish this drink. I didn't want to spend too much time looking at my rum wall. I said, Demerara, Demerara, let's stay with Demerara, but we're gonna use Demerara Hamilton 151. Uh, because that's what I saw, and because I, I, this is not my first cocktail. This ain't my first rodeo. So do as I say, and not as I do. I'm adding a quarter of an ounce, I guess, of uh, Demerara 151 here yeah, to finish this drink up. It's, this is a good overproof, by the way. Drop one, crack the other. Totally unnecessary, by the way. Just a habit of mine. I developed it because of a thing I read that uh, Dave Arnold had found out. And it's just like, well, if that's the way he says to do it, I'm not really going to bother to invest any time in, in questioning it. I'm just going to do it that way. And we'll strain this. I'm quite familiar with this drink. This is a real popular one around the old household. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. I love what rum and lime do together. Oh, that's a good one. Jesus Christ, that's good. A daiquiri with an unaged rum, like a Bacardi Silver fine daiquiri. It's going to be bright. It's going to be much more limey. It's going to really rely on lime and sugar for its flavor base. But when you use something like this, a Demerara in particular, which is out of character for a daiquiri, but that's okay, you're going to get a very different experience. You're still going to get that lime and sweet sour thing that is a great entree. Think of it like an appetizer flavor that helps you get into the cocktail. Um, that's why sours are so good for introductory cocktails. But then that's gonna segue into an evolution that's gonna be like this caramel, burnt sugar. Maybe you get some, some banana. You know, you get a little bit of those esters, that rum funk, I do in this anyway. Uh, that might be coming from the 151. It's gonna sound insane. It tastes like the cool breeze that comes in before a thunderstorm when you're someplace hot and tropical. And it's just like, oh, it's so hot and tropical. And then you get like that, that cool breeze that comes in at the front end of the thunderhead. That's what that experience is like for me. I fucking love it. <laughs> Mwah! That's a really good one. Ooh, and you get a little oak char there at the end. This combination of spirits was very nice. This was a very happy accident. Which reminds me, by the way, did you know that we have a podcast? I do. I have a podcast called Midnight Local, where Meredith and I talk about uh, mostly movies. We talk about movies. I really wish you would check it out. I hope you will check it out. Please do. It's down here in the pinned comment. It's up here in the corner. You can check it out on YouTube. You can check it out wherever you get your podcasts. Midnight Local. Hit the subscribe button to it. Go check it out. We're just like, we're just like some friends you didn't know you had sitting on the couch shooting the shit about whatever, but mostly movies. So check out Midnight Local. I don't know where that came from. It came from a need to promote my podcast is where it came from, but I don't know why I thought of it just at that moment. <laughs> <laughs> and I do have a need to promote my podcast. It's a necessary thing. I am a middle-aged, straight, white man, and I must tell the world about my podcast. I must. Rarely I must. Sorry, I don't know why middle-aged, straight, white man is also Catherine Hepburn. But... Yeah, so that's a daiquiri. I think it's an excellent place to put your mouth <laughs> if you're looking for a first cocktail. I don't know why that's the way I wanted to say that, but I did. All right, next up, I want to make a Paloma. And I had to cover my bases. I had to do a tequila drink. Now, the thing is, you're probably thinking, oh, a tequila drink. Why not a margarita? Well, margarita's fine. You know what a margarita is. I think a margarita can be great. I think a margarita could be a perfect first cocktail. But you don't come to how to drink to find out what you already know. So I don't want to do a margarita on this. Okay? Okay. But a margarita is a great drink. Now, Paloma is traditionally made using squirt or Haritos grapefruit soda. And it's just grapefruit soda and tequila. I don't really like them made that way. I respect them. They're not for me personally. I want a drink that's made with fresh grapefruit juice because I don't find that grapefruit soda really tastes like grapefruit juice. I think that they taste different. There's a lot more bitterness and complexity and depth in a fresh juice. So I would just do it with fresh juice. That's me. So I'm gonna build it in the glass and I'm gonna get myself a grapefruit. Now the thing of it is to juice a grapefruit, you need a pedestal juicer. Not like a, not this. You can't put this into that. That's not possible. 
But the thing of that is, I can't find my pedestal juicer. So we're gonna have to get just a little bit wild. I'm gonna just try to squeeze a grapefruit in my hand. <laughs> That's working. It's gonna be very slow and inefficient, but feel free to come up with your own or to modify it or whatever. I completely forgot that I wanted to use a salted rim here. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna have to get a little creative. Hold on. So I don't wanna waste that grapefruit juice. We're gonna just pour it in here. I'll put a little salt here. More medium coarseness, a little bit medium, not like super coarse, not super fine. You need a piece of citrus. If you're gonna rim a glass, this is a good lesson for, you know, beginner bartender. Beginner mixologist, you need, you can't stick this to here with water. You gotta use citrus, okay? And the other thing is, I want to half rim my glass because I'm making the assumption that I wanna have salt on the rim, but I might not. And if I only do half the rim, I can always decide on every sip, do I want the salt or don't I? Yeah, and so what happens when you use like a citrus juice like that, like a lime juice, a lemon, a grapefruit, whatever, to be the kind of glue of your rim is it dries into something that's got a little bit of sugar in it and that makes it hard and sticky and it holds the salt. Water doesn't have that. It really won't hold the salt the same way at all. I'm gonna do eh, three quarters of an ounce. I really don't want too sweet. Grapefruit actually has quite a bit of sugar in it already. That's like one of the issues with orange juice. Orange juice has like kind of too much sugar in it for cocktails a lot of times. Grapefruit has quite a bit of sugar in it as well. I'm going to add two ounces of tequila. Use any tequila you like. Let's just do the BAC, the big ass cube. When you're gonna drop an ice cube into a drink that's already got liquid in it, get your spoon under it and ease it down. Otherwise you're gonna have a huge mess. All right, we're gonna stir that up until it's nice and cold. And that's why I keep my hand on the outside of the glass. I can feel when the glass is getting cold. You know, if it's if the coldness is getting through the glass, you can be pretty sure that the liquid in the glass has already given up as much heat as it can. Club soda, if you will. And there you have a Paloma. Uh, one way to make a Paloma. Very approachable, delicious. I actually think this one could use just a little bit more acidity. I might throw half an ounce of lime juice in there just for fun, what the hell. Let's try that. And you know why? Because I don't know. I think that ruby red grapefruit is kind of lower acidity. There you go. That wakes it up. I mean, you've got this strong, almost astringent grapefruit bitterness moderated by sweetness. It is mild. It does not read as super duper sweet, way less sweet than like a squirt or a Harito soda. And you take all of that and you use that as your entree into the tequila. And the whole thing is infused with that tequila. What does tequila taste like? Well, if I'm being objective and I'm not getting too far into the weeds on it, I, I would say it mostly tastes a little vegetal, a little herbal. I, I sometimes think it tastes almost minty, but not quite like mint. Kind of skunky, but in a pleasant way. With, you know, an older tequila, you're gonna round off the edges on that. I mean, older, I mean like an aged one, a reposado. You're gonna round off the edges on that. You're gonna bring out some of the oak, the char, that kind of stuff. But yeah, for the most part, that's what I think a tequila tastes like. And here it really does complement it because you have this fruit, this citrus, this sweet, this little bit of vegetal kind of thing happening. I mean, you probably know what tequila tastes like even if you're only 21. Oh, that's good. Get it with the salt, man. That's great. That's a lot of fun. I think it's a more modern drink as well. I just felt like maybe you wanted to know about something that wasn't a margarita or a tequila sunrise that would be approachable as a first drink. This next drink is what I'm gonna call the bonus drink. It does straddle that line. For those of you who insist on big dog and your first cocktail, let me introduce you to a little drink called the last word. The last word is actually a prohibition cocktail. It comes from the Detroit Athletic Club, if I'm not mistaken, in the 20s. And it is a equal parts drink that is a formula that can make you so many original cocktails and so many cocktails are basically variations of last words. It doesn't follow the formula of a sour at all. It kind of splits the difference though between a sour and something that's in the spirit forward martini type category of a drink, right? So there's three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. It doesn't really matter what you use, just keep in mind that it's going to be equal parts. So wherever we start, that's where we go with each of these. This is the part that makes it maybe not the best drink for a first cocktail. You do need some difficult to find spirits. We're gonna use Luxardo Maraschino. This is kind of the sweet component of this drink. Now I need another rarefied spirit. I need Chartreuse. This is apparently something that's in really short supply these days. There's like a shortage going on. I have a few bottles of my own because I spill it everywhere. This is a spirit that has been made by Chartreusean monks. 
for a really long time. Yes, the color chartreuse takes its name from the spirit chartreuse. Get some ice, my big, my little. Pour this in. This is my last word. Magnifique. That's a great last word. Oh my God. You get this rush of herbal black pepper notes. Not spicy, but black pepper is what I always get off of chartreuse with a tangy balance between the maraschino and the lime juice, which just brightens up the drink and elevates it super balanced right on a knife's edge you know because you're only getting sweetness from whatever's in the maraschino which is sort of sweet pretty sweet and whatever's in the chartreuse which is well, not that sweet but you are getting a little bit of something there a little bit of sweetness and it balances with that lime juice amazingly it's amazing how good this drink works in just equal parts because it seems almost thoughtless just like equal parts whatever but boom it works um the gin the sour the maraschino oh man this is one of the ones that should be in like a museum. It should be in the MoMA, Museum of Modern Art. I think this is a work of modern art. Mm. Is one other rum cocktail that just came to my mind. It's the Queens Park Swizzle. I feel like I got through these pretty quick. What the heck? Let's make this episode have six drinks in it. Let's do a Queens Park Swizzle. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take my glass and I'm going to add to it a, about an ounce of, of lime juice. Now, if you have thought to yourself, my God, Greg, how do you not do a mojito in this episode? Maybe the Queen's Park Swizzle will answer that call. It'll be like the upgraded mojito, the better mojito. I'm gonna go half an ounce of simple. I don't wanna overdo it. Maybe a little over half an ounce, not quite three quarters, maybe a third of an ounce. I'm gonna add two ounces of rum. Now, here's the thing about this drink. As far as I recall, these are usually made with three ounces of rum, but we're keeping it introductory here, you know? Eh, fuck it. I'm gonna make mine with three ounces of rum. You make yours with two ounces of rum if it's your first drink. If uh, you've been around the block a few times like me, make yours with three ounces. That's okay. Get yourself a bunch of grocery store mint because that's what I got. I don't have a place to grow it here. We are moving. I'm gonna be able to grow mint. And uh, you can take it apart. You can put all the leaves in. We're gonna add a bunch of mint. To me, I think the more the merrier is the answer. I really like a minty drink, right? And when you have an opportunity to make it, so many Drinks aren't minty, so if you're making a minty drink, I say go minty, make it minty. You could also put them in with the whole stem, it doesn't really matter. If you look this recipe up online, I think you will find that recipes usually call for between two and four dashes of Angostura bitters. I'm gonna do three dashes here before we get ice in it. This drink is usually gonna be made over crushed snow-like ice. Well, my Lewis bags, I'm fresh out and I don't feel like getting my ice shaver out. Uh, so we're gonna make do with ice that's as cracked as I can possibly make it. Don't worry, it'll be fine. You use crushed ice. Do as I say, not as I do. This is a swizzle stick, you don't need it. Um, if you ever wondered what a real swizzle stick is, it's this, it comes, it's also called lele stick. Uh, it comes from a particular plant, I forget what, and we're just gonna work it down in there. And this agitation that we're doing right now, that's going to put a lot of mint oil into the drink. You don't need to muddle, you don't need to press it, you don't need to do anything else. Just doing this, this washing machine we're putting it in, that's gonna put plenty of mint flavor in this drink. I think it needs more ice though. We gotta have ice right up to the top. And it's a lot easier when you have properly crushed ice. I just, like I said, I didn't come prepared for this drink today. It was a, it was a whim. Sometimes you gotta take those whims, you gotta chase them. I want you to do that in life. I want you to take your whims and chase them. I think that's good advice, chase them down. You know, I had a whim for this show and I chased it and look at me now, look at me now. Let's throw some mint in there as a garnish. Now I put my Angostura in and I like the color of this, but a lot of times with this drink, I'm gonna add some more Angostura right now and watch it bleed down through the drink as I enjoy it. And there you have a Queens Park Swizzle. Mmm. oh, that's a good drink. It's, mine is bone dry. Increase your sweetness a little bit if it's your first cocktail. This is perfect for me. Let me explain the flavor. You get this Christmas spice. You get this uh, allspice and cinnamon and, and clove a little bit. And you get the lime kind of tempering all of that with a little bit of sweetness, right? And all of those Christmassy spices, they're coming from the Angostura bitters. And that segues into this minty rum that you're gonna find kind of familiar if you've ever had a mojito. Um, and this is why I, I kind of think of this drink as a little better mojito. I love a mojito, don't get me wrong, but like if it's between a mojito and a Queen's Park Swizzle, I'm going for the Queen's Park Swizzle. One of my favorite drinks of all time, no joke. And I think it's a drink 
that could also be your first drink, which is why I wish I had thought of it before I shot the episode because it could have been the lead drink in the episode, but there you go. It's the, it's good. I hope this episode answered a question that I get so often, which is what should my first cocktail be? And yes, if you're paying attention, I got a lot drunker by the end of it. That's what's going to happen on this show. I started stone cold sober and now I'm not. So I hope you will check out Midnight Local, my podcast that I do with Meredith about movies. Um, I am on Twitter, TikTok, Patreon. Patreon's important. That pays for the show. If you like the show, get over to the Patreon and Instagram. And also on the other channel at Midnight Local, which is available wherever you get your podcast. And in the pinned comment below, if you want to watch it as a video, we got a YouTube channel. If you like to listen to it while you're driving, you can watch it. You can hear the podcast. You can do whatever. We, we want to serve you. We live to serve. Whatever you need, we got it.